Hello, everybody, and welcome to the semifinals of the Premodern Showdown Series 4. I'm Michael Hoyp. I'm joined tonight in the booth by former competitor Brian Kowal, I guess, PSS. Oh, yeah. I, oh, is this? PSS. I'm going to make a joke at your expense. And, uh, we all thought that you'd be uh, in the the semifinals, but I guess this was not the way that we were hoping. Um, but we, we, all, all, we all wished it. We yeah. all hoped. But... Yeah. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the last last week didn't didn't break your way. A lot of things had to go wrong, and they did. Uh, but we're happy to have you in the commentary seat tonight, yeah. and we have some exciting magic uh, on schedule for the semifinals. Uh, the first match we have Brian Manolakis up against Rich Shea. Uh, Mano won uh, two, his last two rounds, which actually jumped him up to the second seed. So, uh, yeah, he, he was, like, in the hunt, and then now he's his tiebreaker has just worked out that he is the second seed. So he gets to choose to be on the play or the draw tonight. Uh, what, one, less, than, less than seven days ago, he was two and three in this event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, so a, lot, a lot of things changed very quickly for him. Uh, so I guess I will briefly highlight uh, what the difference is tonight as compared to the other nights. So the players are still going to ban a deck as normal. Uh, I'll jump over the ban screen, I guess, as I do this. Uh, still going to ban a deck as normal. And then they still pick a deck as normal. And then instead of playing a best of three match, we're going to play a best of five match. And that play draw is determined by, by the higher seed. So uh, both players have banned the opponent's slide deck, which is... Uh, you had noted in our pre when we were just chatting that uh, that was the matchup that they actually played in the in the regular season. That it was a Sly versus Sly Mirror, and both those decks are banned now. Um, do you have uh, a take on what each player is going to bring tonight? I would be shocked if Mano didn't bring his Dreadnought deck. Um, I think uh, I think he has to because his black red deck I just think can't beat land tech. And he has to be so scared about land tax, right? Yeah, so, I would agree that like his his black red muse deck is, uh, it won't kill as quickly. And I think Rich's remaining decks are uh, set yeah. up to take advantage of a long game. Yeah, and I think Rich, knowing that, I th I kind of expect him to go blue white because I think blue white just always has a pretty good dreadnought matchup, right? Mm -hmm. Like, or yeah. hard to lose with that one. Yeah, you. I mean. You already have the. I guess both decks have like a, a bunch of Sila cleansings and Swords to Plowshares. So, uh, but maybe Mano knows that Rich will. Rich knows that and will switch to his black red, thinking that he's going to go blue. <laughs> All right, let's let's do the There's big reveal. Less uh, <laughs> less theorizing. Let's let's figure out what they're going to be playing. All right. uh, so first up, we have Brian Manalakis. He will be playing the Esper Stifle Knot deck. Uh, so we have seen this deck in action. It's super powerful, uh, can be really disruptive, like clear the way and then put the 12-12 and just try and end the game. Uh, so it uses blue, white, and black. Uh, the black is primarily for hand disruption in Cabal Therapy and Duress. And then the white gives you Enlightened Tutor to find the Dreadnought and some Silver Bullets. And then also allows you to cast Meddling Mage, which is another... A way to prevent like a card like Source of Posture is getting cast on your Dreadnought or a Disenchant or something that uh, you may have seen, you may not, depending if like a Duress or Cobalt Therapy was played earlier. Um, what do you think of this deck? Mano's Dreadnought deck is so good, it gets Brexian Dreadnought into play 67% of the time. Almost. <laughs> like, it's it's that good. It's okay. definitely very powerful. Also, like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm still shell shocked from him uh, crushing with this deck uh, a week ago. He plays it well. It's a, it's 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 made to dissect a control deck. I think if you're gonna play a dreadnought deck against a control deck, this is the one. You know. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, Mana will be up against the Oath Parfait deck from Rich Shea. Oh. So this is just something that Rich has played and tuned he knows the deck very well uh he's spoken a lot about it he's put a lot of time into designing and tuning i guess he was the original designer but he definitely has taken it from a new angle and put it on the map for pre-modern that it's really just um a very consistent powerful deck 
Uh, so the main engine is Lantax combined with Scroll Rack, gives you access to a number of cards. Uh, it also uh, is complemented by Oath of Druids, which will get either uh, Shard Phoenix or Ancestral Chosen. Uh, so maybe those don't line up the best against like a 12-12. So I think the rest of the deck maybe have to be doing the heavy lifting, but he does have a lot of options. Uh, there's uh, like elements of control like Swords of Plowshares and Seal Cleansing and Aura Silence. Those cards are very good at interacting with a Dreadnought, and some of those can be found with a Lightning Tutor. Uh, you've played a deck similar to this. You registered one for, for this tournament. Yeah. What do you think of this deck list? I played Parfait a lot, and I think it's hands down the best deck in pre-modern. I think it's just the strongest thing going. Um, it's it, it's got it, it can it can answer anything. You know, it's just when how much how quick you can get get everything online and whether you can find the best answers. That is kind of how the deck is set up, is to basically answer your opponent. You have the ability to keep things going with Gaia's Blessing, and basically you can just run your opponent out of threats. And the the way to win is kind of irrelevant if you're just able to answer everything your opponent can do. For sure. All right, uh, I'm ready to jump down the match. Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sounds good. I'll All let right. the players know. Okay. All right, so we have Mano on the left. He'll be playing the Esper Siphon Knot. Rich on the right with the Parfait Oath. And Mano is on the play thanks to his higher seed. And we will see how this match gets kicked off. I'm guessing if things are going to go Mano's way, he's expecting the games to be a little bit shorter. And if Rich is expecting to win, that uh, the games might take a little bit longer. Looks like Mano's kicking it off with four tenths. I was a, not an early believer on four tens. But, so, uh, does that mean that you've come around on it and you're? Yeah, um, especially in like a combo style deck. I did some math, and I think it's better. Even like even if you shuffle, it's it's still better. It's like what do you think is the second best? So like it, the other options are sleight of hand, opt, or peak. Sleight of hand. Okay, because uh, I know close. a lot of people have. Um, chosen to play peak in this sort of deck because you have cards like meddling mage and cabal therapy uh so i do yeah. see the the benefit of having those but yeah the yeah. just being able to dig three cards with with one card is is pretty powerful i do, i do um man it might be time in a deck like like this could be the deck where you actually want predict right <laughs> sure you're just trying to do something real quick and set it up so uh, Rich is going to cast an Enlightened Tutor. Uh, I guess I would... I mean, it could be... It depends on what's in his hand, but it could be Land Text, it yeah. could be Scroll Rack, it could be a Seal of Cleansing. Um, if, if, Rich, if Rich has an answer for Dreadnought, I would assume he's going to start putting his combo together. And if he doesn't, he's probably just going to get a Seal of Cleansing here, is what I would think. Um, but yeah, it's solely on the texture of his hand. Scroll Rack is the choice. Okay. So that will go on top, and I guess did, is this did Rich go first? I, I, no, I think uh, Mano missed the land drop. Yeah, I believe that's what happened. Yeah, he did shuffle with the four ten, so he yeah. might have just got the bad end of four ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I mean like that would have happened with all of the other cards that we talked about, so. <clears throat> Well, Order of Silence is uh, is going to be a hard card for uh, Mano's lower mana and Mana Screwed um, Rex and Dreadnought deck to deal with. Yeah, that's the one thing. Like the the deck is very lean and low to the ground, and yeah. it does that by playing less lands. And it's going to be difficult because a lot of the cards that would answer a card like Order of Silence are enchantments in themselves, like Seal Cleansing. Uh, I'm trying to think if he has a different answer. That might be the only one in the main deck. And that's going to be taxed. So uh, it's going to be a while before uh, Mano is able to kind of 
uh, get rid of this, and basically he has to, otherwise he has to have a bunch of extra mana. And even then, like, <laughs> then you'd also have, like, a head have a stifle ready for the Aura Silence, because it could get rid of the Dreadnought if it came down, so. Yeah. These first two games are super important for Mano to win, too, because his, the, the thing about this Parfait deck is that in my experience, after sideboard, you pick up huge percentage no matter what you play because it's it's basically a deck designed to you know seek out those eight cards in your deck yeah and because we are playing the best of five the sideboard will be after game two so yeah that's the first two they don't play sideboard <laughs> we got chat says that mano doesn't need to doesn't have to worry about land tax at least that's the the bright side <laughs> of things <laughs> he's playing around it <laughs> yeah He's going to make Rich get that Zern Orb. <laughs> All right, another Enlightened Tutor. This is, well, I was going to say, I, I'm not sure where you get, do you just get another seal or a seal cleansing here? Because the land tax isn't doing anything for a while. Um, Oath of Druids doesn't seem particularly impactful. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, like I was going to say, Rich is a smart player. He's going to think about, how, okay, how can Mano win this game? Mm -hmm. And the, the only obvious answer is actually having a meddling mage go all the way, I think. Does he have so, a second copy of Aura Silence in his main deck? Um, yeah. He... I do, I think I do have... Order. He has two. He has two auras, one seal. Okay, because uh, yeah, doubling up on the aura silence seems pretty good in that spot. Yeah, that's true. So the Oath of Druids, I mean, it's kind of just disincentivizes Mano from playing Meddling Mage. Because, I mean, I think in most situations, I mean, Obviously, there's an Aura Silence in play, and so Dreadnought coming down wouldn't be very good. But uh, the 12 12 matches up well with the creatures that could come off of the Oath. And uh, a Meddling Mage might get outclassed by an Ancestor's Chosen. Yeah, I mean, he knows he's not losing to the Dreadnought, though. Mm -hmm. And he would get a free Oath. I guess the kill could eat him down. I don't know. So Mano's just been discarding. I'm looking at the cards in the graveyard. There's two Enlightened Tutors and then... Is it like a Stifle? So, Yeah, he has a Stifle. Double Enlightened Tutor almost makes you think he maybe should have got a... Just got a Lotus Petal with the first... Instead of a... Well, Mano never never cast Enlightened Tutor. He only he fetched for the right. island and then cast Portin. I assume it was on his opening draw, but maybe not. Because he discarded two, like he could have instead of portenting. I guess you don't expect to get to mit, to whiff on your portent. Sure. So the tax is paid. We get two mana for a lotus petal. Yep. Card, card's a little less impressive when it costs two mana. <laughs> but I mean, uh, it's a once. it's a start. I mean, if you're gonna win the game, you got to do something. So. Well, it's about to get weird. Zer's weirded coming out. Yeah, this is a card that, especially if your life total is not pressured, um, it can really be problematic. And also because um, Mano's deck on its own, like the card Firexing Dreadnought doesn't do anything on its own. Like if you're able to just deny Vision Charms and Stifles, then the actual card of Dreadnought is just like a blank. So. Yeah, and I mean, also, he could just keep Mano from drawing land, probably. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably the easiest way to just deny him things. Uh, the only... Well, I'm trying to think... Okay, if you do have a card like Sleight of Hand, that interacts um, interesting against Zero's Weirding, because I think Sleight of Hand is you look at the top two, and then you put one in your hand. So, right. um, But that's 
more of just an anecdote of, of how it interacts with the cards that we were talking that not in Mano's deck, but all right. Zur's Reading comes down, and that is going to be the lock piece that, that does it. And uh, Mano's down a game, um, so he'll be on the play for the, the second one. But yeah, with with mana issues and Rich having the aura of silence, it really just kind of uh, mana didn't do anything. I, and yeah, I mean, I, I I think you look at that hand and so you say like, I'm assuming the rest of the cards were really good, and uh, it just was missing one element, and that was the mana. And mm -hmm. he he took a chance, and uh, he rolled low in this case, so mana's down a game. Yeah, I, I think you have. If he has like the, the combo in his opening draw, I think I think you can probably have to turn one the four times. Or keep a keep a one land board four times hand. Like that's just I mean, Mano had like when you build your deck I don't I I would assume he's like a twenty land deck, right? Yeah, I believe that's around the count, yeah. Twelve, fifteen, eighteen. He's got eighteen lands in his deck. I don't know, maybe it's a little... <laughs> the, the one thing I really do like about the, the Dreadnought decks in in games where you your opponents don't know what you're playing against, and I guess this is a situation where it's it's not for certain what Mano is playing, because it's either one of the two decks, it's either the Black Red Muse or the Stifle Knot, but I think both players are pretty confident on what they're they're bringing, um, that what their opponents are bringing. Uh, the you can mulligan pretty aggressively when like things are blind because opponents don't have the knowledge that you're playing this deck and, and don't have the luxury to like mulligan towards like a sorts of polishers or a disenchant effect. Uh, here, when you have a pretty big inclination of what your opponent's playing, Rich is probably a lot more likely to keep a hand that can beat a Dreadnought or has something that can put up some sort yeah. of resistance. So yeah. that... That loses the the impact of the the game ones that the dreadnought has, which often are some really powerful draws, and uh, often the deck will will be up a game just because you can really mulligan aggressively and put a dreadnought into play on turn one or two. Yeah, I mean, Rich Rich lost the dreadnought at um, LobsterCon. That's why he's not our pre winner national champion. Um, I don't know if you know Flint Espel, but he. Uh... Yeah, he, that deck did have a different element to it, but uh, it yeah it I mean it it could win with dreadnoughts, it also could win with hermit druid, but yeah. But the dreadnought side is probably the better side against Rich's deck. I would okay. All right, uh, Mano's going to start with Island, and then Rich is going to start with turn one, Mox Diamond, discarding a Plains, a Plains, and then a Sylvan Library. Yeah. Always love a Sylvan Library. I didn't think he had one main deck. Oh, he does. Okay. okay. How likely do you think he's going to pay eight life and go down to 12? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... This deck does actually have the ability to to gain life. Uh, Riches does, so it wouldn't be absurd. But uh, Mano is gonna start things off with a, a turn two Dreadnought and then Vision Charm. So it's phased out right now. So the sorcery speed removal. So I guess the the interactions that at least some of the interactions that Rich has, uh, so like Seal Cleansing or Aura of Silence. Um, this Vision Charm has. A semi protection about it at least allows Mano to untap if he has like a card like Stifle. Um, so Mano is assuming he has a Stifle, he is protected against a Seal Cleansing or an Aura of Silence. But a card like Swords of Power Shares is still a little bit problematic. Yeah, stopping half of Rich's rule spells is pretty good though. I think he only has like four swords, three, one Steel, two Aura, right? Okay. To actually remove it. All right, so Rich is going to make a scroll act. So that's a that's a Sarah Sanctum, right? So that's one element I think is in this deck that I didn't realize was in here. But uh, there are a number of enchantments, and that's a way to to gain a mana advantage just with one land. 
That was the first card I cut when I messed with Rich's deck. <laughs> just you didn't like the inconsistency of it, or you just didn't feel yeah. like it was needed, or yeah. I, well, I, I I think you just want all the basics you can in your deck, and it just seemed like I, I guess I was like scared of it. Not <laughs> okay. So the score rack was used on Rich's turn. Was that correct? I missed that. So the the yeah, he, cut... he, he played it, used it. Okay. Maybe. So that allows the Dreadnought to attack for 12. I don't know if Rich paid any life with the Sylvan Library. He might have paid 4. Yeah, neither player giving us life totals. Uh, I mean, Mano's, Mano's giving his own. He's got the 20-sided die. I was trying to watch um, if Rich drew an extra card with it or not, but it didn't look like it. Hmm. He might have playing a scroll rack just to get deeper in the deck. Yeah, I would be a little bit surprised if he didn't draw the, the first card. I think the first four life is pretty much a free one. Especially when your life total goes down in chunks of 12. But here's a situation where taking extra damage could make a difference. There is a meddling mage. Um... So, I'm guessing he's going to start some watchers here, because if he just has a sniple, he basically has virtual act, right? Yeah, uh, unless Rich has like multiple answers, if he had two seal cleansings. Um, beyond that, I can't think of the other interaction stuff. He could play a seal cleansing. If he had an, another land, he could cunning wish for. I don't know if he has like a chain of vapor. You can play a seal card and play a land and play an aura silence. That's probably it. <laughs> it looked like he was. A... I mean, if he had swords, I think. Well, maybe not. Do you, do you swords at that turn, or do you try to set up like a safer source of pushers? I guess if you know your partner has been. Probably. What would make it safer, I guess? Yeah, that's true. Um, like, Rich doesn't have, like, forms of resistance that, like, I think I think if you have it, you would just play it. Also, like, preventing the first hit could buy you a turn, which could be important uh, in the future. Well, he does have an aura silence. There is a day, so... Cool. Yep, that was the, the tapped out. The Sarah Sanctum yeah. only, only made three mana. Uh, for the aura silence and days was the answer that Mano had. So a quick Mano way. Plays one days. <laughs> yep. Well, that is. Um, I think he took the the deck building perspective because the the deck lists are open to to all the players, and he kind yeah. of took advantage of those situations. Of he's going to say, I have exactly one days, so you know that it's 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 in my deck list. It's somewhere there. Uh, so if you want to respect it, I'm going to get the value out of it. Uh, sometimes I'm going to have it, uh, and uh, most of the time I'm not, but it's kind of always on your mind. And uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's an interesting uh, deck building approach. It, it's something that like doesn't come up very often because this nature of, of these public deck lists don't come into play very often. So I think um, it's pretty interesting. So I had a friend who uh, always, he would play one days in his deck, and he would always make sure his opponent saw it while he was <laughs> shuffling before the match. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Just to, so they played around it. Just to give us hope. All right, I'm going to jump over the decks, and we can maybe make some predictions about sideboarding. Uh, so yeah. I do have the Oath Parfait list up. Um, Argivian Fine, Tormod's Crypt, Blue Elemental Blast, Duress, Red Elemental Blast, Orem's Chant, Stifle, Swords of Plowshare, Circle Protection Red, Brain Freeze, Ray of Revelation, Abolish, Engineered Plague, Aura of Silence, and Phantom Neshoba. So a full 15-card singleton. Uh, one thing to note is there are two copies of Cunning Wish in the main, which allows him to get a number of these bullet instants. Um, I don't. I think still some of them are going to come in, but uh, you might see like a heavy hitter, at least one copy, stay in the sideboard if he's keeping those Cunning Wishes in. I think, I think you have to think about how many dead cards um rich has in his deck uh to take out but 
I I don't know. I would lean towards taking Cutting Wish out because I just think it's too slow. That is, yeah. One thing to say is like because Mano's deck is so quick that like you don't necessarily have the luxury of getting to the three mana to cast the Cutting Wish to find the answer. It might just be better just to replace those Cutting Wishes with two copies of of cards that interact with what what Mano's trying to do. Rich's best cards are Abolish, Red Elemental Blast, Or of Silence, Duress. And I mean, Orm's, Chan- Orm's Chance is very reasonable. Orm's Chan, yeah, I think Orm's Chance is very good. I mean, it breaks up the combo, right? Yep. Uh, what cards are you unimpressed by the main deck for, for Rich? Like, is the Oath package coming out? Uh, I think he takes the Oaths out. I don't yeah. think they do enough. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I, I would just pour the Oath package out if I were him, but uh-huh. I don't know, Rich... <laughs> Ivory Tower, I don't love against him. I, that's yeah. that. Whenever I play Parfait, Ivory Tower is one of the first cards I take out of me a lot of the time. If if I don't think it's going to do anything, does Rich have to like? If he's taking out Oaths, is he taking out both the creatures then? Like, is is Rich potentially just boarding out all his win conditions? Like, he could board out. Does he leave Zora's Weirding in? Because in theory, you could just take out all the oh. all the win conditions and just. Say I'm going to answer everything, and then just deck yeah. you out because of scroll rack. He could leave. He could, there's other cards he could take out. To, he, like he could leave it just one oath of druids because he has the mind tutor deck and keep the two oath creatures in, and then um, and probably switch Nashoba in for the shark phoenix, right? And <laughs> then he he has some stuff. He has like torment script isn't going to do anything, right? And like a, a couple other cards that are probably less good. Or punish probably doesn't get a lot of action mm-hmm. in this matchup. So a lot of choices for Rich. I, I'm not exactly sure what the best permutations are, but he definitely has a lot of options, and things definitely get better for him after board, as you talked about earlier. Yeah. All right, let's look at Mano. So he's got three Tormod's Crypt, a Mother of Runes, two Swords of Polishers, two Chill, three Engineered Plague, a Seal of Removal, a Seal of Cleansing, another Days, and then a Winter Orb. Is there anything that's jumping out at you I, the seal I think I, I love the days and the mother of runes for sure so uh i guess we didn't talk about the dynamic of like if if man is going to lean more on a mother of runes plan does that make oath of druids a more appealing choice for man or for rich or do you think it's just like the the hits that he have just don't interact that well against what what man was trying to do um Quite possibly, but I think I could also see Mano bringing in Tormod's Crypt to like to keep Rich from bothing against him. The one thing is, Mano doesn't have as much of a luxury. Like he can't take out as many, he can't bring in too many cards because he doesn't want to dilute what his deck is trying to do. Where yeah. uh, Rich has more flexibility. There are a lot more cards that are just kind of dead. Um, There's possibly a, like a control angle he could go, you know, where he like. Just plays Tormod scripts and <laughs> and little beaters or something. <laughs> I don't know. You you could do some weird stuff. I don't know. If, I don't know if Mano is the type to go that deep. But. I, yeah, I, I I think a lot of times you do look at different angles and and try to figure out ways like to catch your Rich opponent win? off guard. Yeah. Yeah, like how can Rich win? Rich can win if he beats down with creatures or decks him. So Tormod script keeps him from being able to deck him. It forces them to have to win with creatures, right? I don't know. Uh, I guess not, with there's always there's weirding. With scroll rack, like if 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 Rich is able to answer everything on a mano, he doesn't need to like have guys blessing. He can just have scroll rack. But I don't know how often that would that exact scenario would would come into play. Yeah. But in I think inevitably Mano might be able to kill that scroll rack. I don't know. Sure. I guess he doesn't have that many disenchant effects, I guess. He probably just tries to be one for twelve twelve, let's be let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that's still his 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 game his eighth game plan, so So Rich gets to be on the play as they're gonna shuffle up for their first sideboarded game. And as we talked about Things seem to be uh, a better improvement for Rich Shea's deck. So, 
Yeah, it felt like there was a lot more action he could bring up. We saw no dress or cabal therapy out of mana, and I think those are like just super critical in this matchup. I know when I play Parfait, like just like getting that, losing that key piece you need to like get your engine going can just be really rough. Yeah, because if if the deck doesn't have those like engine pieces, it kind of spins its wheel. It doesn't do a lot. Like <laughs> a lot of its right. cards are kind of clunky or like. There's just a lot of really narrow cards that are low impact. Like you might just draw like a Zurin orb at the wrong time and you just kind of like, oh, this isn't great. Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah, if you're able to answer, like take out a land tax or take out a scroll rack with a duress or a cobalt therapy, then at least you have uh, the luxury of time that like each turn that passes, like Rich is probably not doing as much. Looks like uh, Rich is going to start things off with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Plains, as he's done before, playing a Plains, and then starting with an Oath of Druids. So uh, this will deter Mano from leading off with like a Meddling Mage or a Mother of Runes. So looks like uh, there's a... I mean, I think I, w I would still be reasonable to... Like, depending on the rest of your hand, but I I would Oath it, or uh, play a Dreadnought into the, an Oath. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't think you can expect to get rid of it, so... Like, I don't think you can I use your on that. Just, I would love just to go turn one Mother of Runes Tormat script here. <laughs> I don't Just hope I it's have, like... He does have three blessings, though, so... Hope it's like the last card. <laughs> yeah. The creature. You get to see what they're really made of, though. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel I like when, whenever I play against Oath of Druids, like, it, especially in pre-modern, like, uh, it always feels so bad to trigger it, and then a lot of the time you're kind of like, oh, that that's not so bad. <laughs> like, right, yeah, it's, you, we're, we're, we've become trained to think it's game over, but when, when we actually play against it, we realize, yeah. oh wait, they don't actually kill me. <laughs> it's, it's funny, because it's also, I get kind of a similar feeling whenever I trigger land tax but it's only like the first trigger like i feel like i don't feel as ba bad like i feel like the second trigger of land tax doesn't feel as bad but the first one feels really bad for whatever reason i, I hate triggering land tax yeah yeah <laughs> like i would say <laughs> they're they're not good feelings of like yeah you know. But if I play Parfait, I can hardly believe it when I actually get to land tax against people. It's like <laughs> the most absurd feeling in the world. <laughs> like, you just don't understand how good three basics are? What are you doing over there? <laughs> but Mano is dropping that second land. Yeah, I mean... I guess if he's planning on using it, it'll make sense, but because um, his deck is where he doesn't really need to operate on a lot of mana, so he could just stay at one mana for a long time and then do something later. Looks like he's going to opt for a seal of cleansing here. Yeah. There aren't many of these in mana deck. Yeah, I think so there's one in the main and then one in the... What he uses it for. Like, he's tanking right now what He's actually just like having the conversation we just had with himself. Like, yeah. what's worse, getting oath or getting land tax? Well, I think, I think land tax. The one thing is, so if the game just goes on from this point, Rich would gain an advantage from land tax triggering. Here, oath of druids doesn't do anything right now. Still, it it might eventually. I I agree. I think land tax is. I mean, yeah. you could. You also could make an argument that maybe Mox Diamond was a consideration. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, so Rich just untaps and then has a turn. I think Mano should be at 18 from a fetch land and then a City of Brass. Say 17 now. Yeah. 
our node. Do you have an idea what you would name in the spot? Oh, I guess then line tutor is going to respond. So that's not going to be in his hand. Uh... You know, when I was at Mano's show, he's like, I'm not a good thought therapy bro. <laughs> like, he's like, I just never know what to name. And I like was trying to come up with a quiz for him. And I, I did a quiz on him and like with my deck. And like, I think he said, what? Like, like, what do you name against red? He's like, lightning bolt, I guess. I'm like, yeah, that's probably what I name. But then I was like, wait a minute, that's terrible. I could mess up my deck. Um, anyway, in this spot, though, he's probably... Well, Rich is the line tutoring, so that's yep. telling. Right? Yeah, so the scroll rack is going to go on top. So I'm going to guess there's not a scroll rack in Rich's hand. Um, yes, swords to postures. Is... Yeah, seems good. Aura of Silence would be yeah. a good one. Yeah. Like, I, I might go Aura of Silence, because that's... Higher impact card, or heart, yeah. if, if impacts you more. He knows he has three minutes deck now, too. I like saying the card I'm most afraid, that is most going to destroy me in general. Uh, the other factors are of like how many other pieces you have of interaction and like how many more turns you expect the game to go. Oh, we, we see. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really interesting. Like, well, um, well. <laughs> nice Oath of Druids. I guess the scroll rack does change that. But uh, yes, the two creatures. Well, I, in theory, there could be a third creature in the deck. But uh, Shard Phoenix and Ancestral, Ancestors Chosen are the cards in Rich's hand. And that's kind of one of the things that we kind of talked about how, how the deck can have some clunky draws and uh here we kind of see the, <laughs> that taking place this is this is where um therapy really shines because you name the card and they they don't have it and, <laughs> yeah. and now you see you don't have to therapy them again So Chad has asked, I'm curious why he chose Rack over Library. Um, part of it, I would think, is because he has two dead cards in his hand that he, if he has a way to shuffle, that he's able to exchange those for two new cards. I think it's, yeah, I think it's absolutely because his hand is dead. And the only, his only way out is to, like, scroll rack those things back into his deck, right? He's oh, I, I missed the chat responded uh, after the hand was revealed they said now i know so oh, okay. they, it was it was a, probably a, a message from before the cabal therapy had resolved text might still be right all right mano is going to cast a portent on his turn he thought a long time on that play so I, i'm guessing he has a lot of what going on here the thing is, like, let Ancestors Chosen is gaining four life, right? <laughs> and the the Shark Phoenix doesn't do anything. So if he if he actually had the um, the Dreadnought, it yeah, seems like great time to spread it out there. Yeah, like I don't think it's gonna get better, right? Like, mm -hmm. Rich has a few looks that he could. He basically could upkeep, put the Ancestors Chosen. Or the Shard Phoenix on top. So he'd get a new card, get a creature into play, and then draw a new card. Um, but still, like, I think you're going to have to fade some draws from, from Rich if you're going to win this game. I, th I think if I had Dreadnought, I would just play it there. We have a follow from uh, Axial Age Gamer. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for the follow. I do like the alternate mode of portent where you can in certain situations just look at your opponent's deck though rich does a pretty good job of kind of protecting against that with cards like scroll rack or sh shuffle yeah. effects like um lane tutor or land tax so mana was therapy to weigh sharp units, which i like because his opponent is on scroll rack and you're just i don't know if you've ever been on a scroll rack without any other action to go with it but it's 
it's kind of a miserable card. <laughs> you're just like you're like paying mana for a regular draw step once you see those top two. Well, I I guess so. the The idea is like when you have so few resources, it's kind of if you think of it like a steam engine or a train engine, it's really slow to get going. And just denying that one extra card means that he digs deeper each turn or d- digs less deep each turn, yeah. and so that like he might be stagnant for much that much longer. For sure. We have a gifted sub uh, from No Dad Bays. <laughs> and uh, so that went to D38, 33, some, some username. I don't know. It's uh, everything. Like, usernames okay. just look like a bunch of like letters and numbers to me. I can't, I can't parse anything. You gave a sub to somebody. <laughs> yes, yes. So the appreciate the support. So. Right on. All right, I'll update Mano's life. He's down to 16. Not that his life total is like really that big of a deal. Like the way Rich's deck operates is he either wins the game or like he either, it doesn't matter what your life total would be at. You could be at 250 and Rich would still be able to win the games that he does win. So whose position do you like more? Like I, the one thing I mean, like Rich is in a spot where his draw has not panned out the way that he want. But then also Mano has spent a number of turns. He's seen Rich's hand, so it it seems to me that Mano doesn't have exactly what he he wants because I think we all agreed that we would have gone for it in that situation. Yeah, I think uh, I think I like Rich's position a little more, even if Mano gets the dreadnought combo out. Um, he's he's still giving he's giving Rich the ability to look at his hands worth of new cards every turn. Um, so we see a, a replenish. This this is just for a land tax, right? It is, yeah. Okay. A land tax that will not get any lands currently. Yeah. So. And there is value to keep that in your hand because of scroll rack. Yeah. I mean, I think you do it, right? Well, it, it, I mean, one of the cards that, that Rich has is an Undiscovered Paradise. So he has three lands currently and will have the will go down to two. So yeah, effectively two, yeah. Though, I, Mano doesn't I really need three sure mana, does he? What's it? Mano doesn't need to go to three mana, does he? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. But he did almost play a land last turn. Okay. Like, and then kind of put it back. Yeah, land tax can be frustrating when you have to like think you're like, okay, do I do I want to cast play this land that's in my hand? <laughs> just this, some some that's usually pretty automatic in the game of Magic, where you just play your land drop every turn. You've got to reconsider every turn. I believe Mano just can discard the hand size. So what else would be in his hand? Um, maybe Mother of Rune? A bunch of stifles and vision charms? I have no idea. Yeah. I feel like if you had if you had a bunch of vision charms, do you think if you had multiple stifle vision charms, would you have used the vision charm mode to mill four cards like when Rich had Enlightened Tutored for something? I think I would have. Um, maybe. Yeah, probably. Also, you can Vision Charm a Max Diamond, right? Kill it? Or is that not a thing? I don't think so, because the phasing wouldn't trigger comes into play effects, uh, right? Yeah, Though, right. yeah, and I, I think, yeah. It's treated it, as if it weren't in play now. Yeah. That's how it's rolled. Yeah, so it uh, like is it a, a bunch of lands? Is that is that what's in his hand? It's just all... I mean, he's discarded two already. Yeah. So the first game he can't, or can't draw any, and uh, this third game he's uh, presumably just has lands and at least not the complete combo. Or he's waiting for a spot. I mean, I just yeah. That that's the thing I'm trying to trying to think in my head is like, 
what such scenario is he trying to set up? Uh, I I can't I can't see it. Right, Lotus Petals gives me the same amount of mana, you know. Yeah, that's a way to increase your mana without triggering the land tax, I guess. So. One of the things that the Parfait Oath decks, like, they are very difficult to play because you have so many interactions with the Scroll Rack and Land Tax, but I think they're also pretty difficult to play against. Uh, it's difficult because, like, even if you do see your opponent's hand, it changes pretty quickly because of Scroll Rack and whatnot, and, like, they like the value of a Singleton in their 75 is really high impact because they see so many cards, so it's hard to play against, like, every single card that they theoretically could have um that i mean this is more just for in general i think in this situation obviously the the deck lists are public but um but i mean that kind of still applies of like i'm sure mano doesn't know exactly how riches has cyborged i mean we yeah. we talked about consider maybe taking out the creatures and that doesn't seem to be the case so rich has importantly found zero in our okay i was like why did he play that score rack and, oh he played as an so he's going to be off to the races next turn. Do you think that Ancestor's Chosen is in the hand right now? Do you think keeping track? <laughs> Uh, I certainly have not been keeping track. Um, I would. This is one of those things. If I was thinking of magic, I'd be like, keep track of where the ancestors chosen is because you have a therapy in your yard. You can take one card away from your opponent. Yeah, and then I would lose track of it and get mad at myself for the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like he would have drawn it, right? I mean, like, it's it could be out of the top too. I don't know. Okay. Um, I right. mean, if if he wants to trigger Oath, he can always respond to the Oath trigger and put it on top. But you're right. just talking from, from the perspective of, of Mano flashing back a Cabal Therapy. Yeah. I guess with with two scroll racks, it would have to be that um, they'd have to be either both tapped or uh, Rich would have to be tapped out. It's a clean metal -like game. What do you name here? I think you still name Aura Sounds. That is Cut Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's also possible that this meddling mage is just going to be used for Cabal Therapy. That it's yeah. not going to stick around. But... Cabal Therapy being somebody with an active scroll rack. Seems a little dicey. <laughs> we have gotten rid of that. <laughs> the pesky uh, shark humans. <laughs> Enemy of Chris Bakula's. At some point, it might come back, right? Yeah. Because you said this is Man, one I'm of just your. His lotus petal from <laughs> you said Char Phoenix is like one of your favorite cards, right? Oh yeah. So when you played, you don't have shard. You don't have oath in your your in your list. Have you played any of the parfait with oath and shard Phoenix? Yeah, I have. Okay, it's good. It's I, it's my favorite oath creature now. Like what I played it once and I was like, this is crazy good. I almost think it's just played two. Shard Phoenix. Because I'm not a believer on this Ancestors Chosen. Okay. I think, uh, I guess I just don't, I'm, I'm not convinced I'm going to result, like, oath against the red deck, you know? And that's the main place I want it. Uh, the Sly deck, yeah, they can play around it. Um, yeah. A Goblins deck, but, um, sometimes, like, yeah, oath, oath is best against Goblins and Owls. Like, yeah. You probably need it to beat it. 
like my my blue white version probably was getting also. All right, was that a stifle on a land tax trigger? Um, did he play another lotus petal? And he might have just like missed or um put them in the different order. I saw like him flash a stifle. He right. might have I, I bet he stifled blind tags. So the Ancestor's Chosen. Oh. And he owes the Ancestor's Chosen. Okay. How much life did he gain? Um, <laughs> I would say about eight. <laughs> All right. We don't, don't have... <laughs> um, maybe we should message those. Why does Rich never show us that? Too? I don't know. <laughs> That's my one criticism. <laughs> He's so precise about everything, and he never shows a life total while he's playing, you know? <laughs> I'm willing to bet it's because he's like pure pen and paper for life total. <laughs> like, well, like, because that's how. I know a lot of times, like, Mano has a second, he has, like, a red 20-sided die, but, like, now Rich is probably at the point where he's more <laughs> than 20, so it, it's still probably a little bit ambiguous. Yeah, no idea. All right, our mother of runes. So Raph is saying that um, he tried uh, Ancestral's Chosen in the sideboard this month. He's he's the creator of um, of Parfait. And um, he said, I'm probably going to ditch it for a Radiance Dragoons. Yeah. So I guess the I guess you probably don't gain that much life that just or maybe the ability to cast a Four mana two five is is more impressive. That was this was where I was really hoping for him just to drop a uh, drop a torment script. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Oath does trigger again, and Rich and does sh does show that he had a, a Phantom Neshoba, and the up the guy's blessing was revealed. So that's gonna shuffle all his graveyard. He just stifled. What was the stifle on? I don't know, because Rich is still shuffling his... He stifle land tax again? He must have. Is Mano thinking of blocking this for our first target with 2 2 I hope not. No. I guess he has a live... Uh... He's yeah. giving a pro white with the mother. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he was thinking like, do I want to expose these to a source of postures at this moment? But do you think Mano named source of postures one of his metal mages, and now he's unable oh. to kill any of Rich's creatures? I mean, you kind of have to figure that like it's. I mean, that was what's going to happen. I mean, the oath was yeah. in play, so I don't know. Um, and. <laughs> Like, unless maybe you were just, like, taking some risk that, like, he didn't have a card like Phantom Neshoba and, in his deck, and you were uh, hoping that you could, like, combat the 4-4 of the Ancestral Trojan. I, I think that's reasonable. So, I, I, I don't... I think Plow out, too, right? Like, yeah. I guess we... Going. Yeah, we did talk about, like, the cards that, like, he, he doesn't have as much wiggle room to sideboard, but that is a card that he could sideboard out. All right, so Rich... swords and blessing Rich... on mages. He named swords and guys blessing. Okay. Well, wasn't oh guys blessing was revealed. I'm like, I was thinking it was cast. No, it was not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just. Um, I think it, like if the game goes any number of turns, like more than six, I feel like it's hard for man to to win. I mean, obviously he can, but uh, I feel like his his chances go down pretty quick. 
Yeah, I don't like. I was talking about like, like outsider strategies to like stop Rich from being able to win the game, but I don't. I don't know if he has the tools to really pull that off in his in his seventy five. Yeah, the, the way that Rich's deck is set up is there's a lot of like quirky different angles he can take, and it's very good at like it's very resilient in the sense of like it's hard to you have to exile the graveyard multiple times because there's so many guys blessing and like and then there's like the score rack effect and like i don't there's just like so many things that you kind of have to be prepared for and it's pretty tough because yeah. that's not the angle that mano is operating on he's i'm proactive i'm trying to do something very powerful i'm gonna prevent you from stopping me in some sense and try and end the game quickly yeah two two tunnel doesn't chance they're gonna stop <laughs> much <laughs> or yeah. But four dress for out there would be nice. Yep. All right. Well, we'll jump back down to the main play. It looks like players are making some adjustments. That is one thing that I really do like. Uh, it kind of gets amplified in a best of five match. Is it feels like there's a little bit more back and forth in sideboarding. Uh, you kind of adapt to what your opponent's doing, and there's a little bit of mind games. Not and maybe it's not always my games. It might just be like I'm adjusting based on what I've seen, or I've learned new information, or just a play draw thing. Like just that dynamic, I think is really interesting in a best of five. Yeah, I wish. Uh, I wish we could see their sideboard choices. <laughs> yeah. Like... Man, I was going to need to win two in a row here. It's going to be an uphill battle for him. He's been at this position before. Yes, yes, he's he's been on the the face of elimination for a while, so not yes. anything he's not accustomed to. And we have he's seen... Like a, he's like a little caged animal, you know? You back him, it, back him yeah. up, yep. back him up, and then... And we've seen his deck do some amazing things, <laughs> so... Um... We'll see if he it's can. Scary. It's like a scary. Well, that's the one thing is like it's it's tough when you play against Dreadnought because it's like the game can be condensed into so few turns, and it kind of just leaves a bad feeling because you're like, oh, like my hand looked good, and like it just got disrupted, and like and then I died, and it's kind of like, well, that's that's gonna happen sometimes. So it's yeah, it's such a yeah, it's very, it's a very intricate first three turns, you know. Mm -hmm. But it does put a lot of weight of, like, the mulligan decision, I think, for Rich. Like, when you play against a deck that is as powerful and quick as a Dreadnought deck, uh, the most agents you have in those, when it is a condensed game, is is the initial seven that you keep. Yeah, and I think the other thing with the makes this deck so terrifying is, like, there, it's not your rock beats every deck, probably, right? Like, even if it's, like, a really bad matchup, you could still, like, just turn one dreadnought them or duress them you know mm -hmm. and like it, it will just have draws that the other decks draws cannot possibly win against yeah you can also stifle your turn with fetch line that way, so. <laughs> <laughs> not that it doesn't vary all right we're gonna kick things off with a uh, dreadnought right away, it's vision charmed out. So dreadnought charm, lotus petal, uh, has provided the turn one dreadnought. Vision charm is probably the preferred way to um, make your dreadnought happen in this matchup mm -hmm. because stifle is almost better than vision charm oh well, maybe not better uh i guess vision charm is still better at defending your dreadnought yes because it, it protects against both sword supply shares and the seal seal effects yeah 
Though, I mean, like, Stifle does have utility in other things. Like, we've seen it, like, uh, stifling land tax triggers or Oath of Druids or whatnot, so. He well, was to cards last time. <laughs> so, Mano has not, like, looked at, at Rich's ha hand, so it's kind of like at this point of, like, if Rich has a Seal Cleansing or a Swords of Plowshares... It appears that he would be vulnerable, but no, Rich doesn't have an answer, and uh, falls again to a quick dreadnought. So, yeah, I mean, like as kind of predicted, is the the games that that Mano has been winning are the ones where he shoves a dreadnought into play very early, and Rich doesn't have an answer. Uh, so, I guess let's. I'm going to bring up the deck list and uh, look at Rich's list, and I I mean I don't have any information of of what Rich kept, but. Um, it. I feel like there are like a good number of answers that he has in a post board. Uh, do you think Rich should be maybe possibly mulliganing more aggressively? Quite possible. I I like mulliganing aggressively when I play perfect. Um, I because it can it makes up its card disadvantage like better than any deck ever. Like, I mean, so in this type of matchup, would you mulligan a like a land tax scroll rack hand if it didn't have an interaction piece with like probably any of the? Not. I'd no. probably still keep it. Okay, so uh, although uh, it's that's so such a dicey hand though to keep. I don't know. Maybe you do because yeah. maybe you think if like I just get that dreadnought, I'm gonna have all the time in the world to put everything else together. You know. I know one thing that I always have a hard time getting away from is like. Whenever I'm mulliganing against a deck with like Cabal Therapy and Duress, it's kind of like, oh, should I put that much weight of finding one answer to a Resolve Dreadnought? And because right. if I do that and then they just Duress it away, then I'm even at a more disadvantage. Uh, so I can see that thought process as well. Yeah. Cause ma ma yeah, because Mano can just as easily just Duress you turn one, right? Mm -hmm. If you like mulligan to a, a single answer and yep. then you're in an even worse position. Yeah, his best draws. I think Mano's best draws will be rich, like can stuff. The other blue card outside of Cunning Wish and Propaganda is Zur's Weirding, which we did see earlier in this match. So it locked up, locked up one of the games. So I'll say when I play Dreadnought, I usually feel like I'm losing to my draws, not my opponent's draws. You know, like I, I'm losing because I I can't. Get to a dreadnought effectively. Okay. More often than. I mean, I feel like you'd almost say that, like, whenever you feel like your deck is more powerful, though, like, if your deck does something more powerful, like the games that you lose, you feel like your deck kind of failed you. I don't know. Yeah. I guess so. But. Like, I know when I play Parfait, I don't feel that way, though. Okay. Like, Except when I get like, you know, two foils on my tax or something. <laughs> <laughs> if I put it in a resolve this time. But so Rich can't do that. Your your parfait version has has blue counter magic, which does really change like a lot of the matchups. Do you think is that a metagame choice? Is that a personal choice? Or do you think that, that version is overall more has an edge against things? Like what what are the pros and cons of that list as compared to something that, that Rich is running? Okay. Big pro number one is I think it crushes the mirror. Okay. Uh, big pro number two is I think it makes you significantly better against combo decks. Uh, and while not really not giving up really any percentage against red, you might even be better. I don't know. Okay. What um, What think, do you think is the downside? I guess you give up percentage against decks like um, like goblins and elves. Okay. Because you you're leaning hard on. Um, engineer plague to do it for you. Okay. Um, I mean, you have a lot of you can answer a lot of elves with goblins, you know, if you get going. But I mean, elves can play around your elves is probably rough because they can play around your land tax. Anything that plays around your land tax gets rough for any part of the deck. I think. Okay. Um, let's see the other and I I don't know if my rock matchups better or worse, but I know I. I I lost a rock this month when I was playing. I played Parfait this month. And... But I definitely had 
I don't know. It's probably just, it's pretty it's pretty even. It's a I know Sam's lost a rocket along with it. All right. Not draw with the blue white deck, I think is better too. Because like your best draws with it, you pretty much just counter every everything your opponent plays in the first like four turns. So Mano I haven't paid attention to, I I think assume he's mulliganing right now. Yeah, um, he's and... mulligan at least once. I think he's on his first mulligan. Okay. Though I mean like the the Dreadnought deck is a deck that mulligans very well. Um one of the best decks yeah. actually at mulliganing because you're looking for that combination of that dreadnought and the stifle or vision charm. And when the games are short, it doesn't matter how few cards you've mulliganed onto. Right. Who do you like for this game five? I like Rich. Like I think going first for the dreadnought deck is huge. Is really huge. I mean, the, the, uh, those are the games that that Mano has won. Is like it was a turn one dreadnought, right? Both games. I think so. Yeah. I, th I think so as well. That's how he got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mano's going to look at his hand and figure out if this is the hand that he wants to have his PSS life on the line for, and his answer is no, it is not what he wants. So he takes a peek at the top few cards, and now he'll shuffle up, and he'll be mulliganing again. So, Do you look? Do you look at the top cards when you mulligan? Every time. Every time, okay. Always look. Don't fear information. <laughs> <laughs> I never look. I don't. I don't think I get tilt. I don't get tilted if I see the perfect three on top, though. Really. Chat says always like, look. Okay. What if you looked at your top three every time and you were like, "Wow, like seventy percent of the time, those three cards would have saved me." Would you, wouldn't that like slowly influence you to well, get a little less of those in some of those positions? You know, I don't know. I, th I think what it should do is it should say because the decision that you're making of saying I'm looking at my hand I know what's in my deck like you're making a, a, a mathematical choice for given the information like yeah. Sometimes uh, it's that, that, like like for example like let's say I'm like oh shoot I need um I, I have to have a land in my top two or it's it's useless. So I figured out the percentages there, and I mulligan because. But then I saw on top. Oh wait, I have this other card that would have saved me, you know. And then that that informs you on your next one. All right. So Rich has started with a turn one land tax, and Mano's going to kick things off by fetching a swamp and duressing, revealing a hand of two Otha Druids. Uh oh. Propaganda? Is it, I think that's yeah. I think that's what the blue card is: propaganda, and then a shard phoenix and an undiscovered paradise. Uh, what, what do you take here? I think you just take propaganda, because like, I don't know, maybe. Well, yeah, because just if taking one. If you you take oath, and if you have a cabal therapy, you take propaganda, right? Yeah, I was gonna say like. Sometimes with Cabal Therapy, you can kind of like let it sit in your hand, but if Rich just has a green source, then he can play one of those. So, so Mano takes... Oh, if they pick that propaganda, the writing's on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Mano plays... Or not Mano, uh, Rich will play the Oath of Druids from the Undiscovered Paradise. And Mano's going to try and operate Ideally, he wants to stay on one mana if he can, but it's going to be problematic. He doesn't have a fetch land. Yeah, he's giving him the oath. Rich doesn't have give... a way to really capitalize on the oath right now, so that's that's a little in Mano's corner here. All right, so it looks like land tax is likely to trigger now. Gets an island, so um, what do you think we'll see here? I mean, if it, I would go for Dreadnought if I had it right. I think he's just going to drop a Dreadnought. 
But then... I feel like I would take the propaganda then. Um, you can pay. Like if if you if you had all the cards in your hand, and you knew you were gonna like, and you knew you expected to go for it, like propaganda like slows you down in some essence. Like like if Rich gets it out, then you have to pay two just to attack every turn. Yeah. Um, I can't believe this propaganda is still Rich's deck. I just want to say I don't like like really. Like, he might he might still have the um the armor guns in. I feel like that's what it would go with, right? Right, yeah, but I'm just like, what did he take out? I don't know. I don't know. It's like... I'm wrapping my head around it. He must have the guns to one of them. He has propaganda, right? Because, like... You don't... I mean, you don't have to, but... Um, yeah. it, that seems like... With a deck that, like, Mano... I mean, Mano's deck seems very well set up against a card like Propaganda, like because you have you have one creature that's twelve twelve. So like, yes. if you're gonna pay two mana for one creature to attack, like Mano seems like the deck that you want to do it with. So I yeah. yes, I would say in general, like if I'm gonna have Propaganda in the post board games, I feel like I would want a way to disrupt his mana. Mano also knows he's not gonna cast Propaganda this turn unless he has max damage, right? Yeah. Um, Rich is playing a second land, which is interesting. He's got a Swords to Plowshares on the upkeep. Does Mano have his, and his permission is all like preventative. It's, he doesn't have like a card like foil or anything. So why did Rich not oath? It was it was phased out. So, oh, phased. I'm yeah. sorry. Was, don't know. Do you like let Mano hit you with the twelve twelve? I don't know. Uh, I don't think I would. Close that game out real fast. I don't know. <laughs> I think I might. Because you give him one draw step. Yeah. If he's able to stop it, he's going to stop it, right? Like. I think I'm gonna go with. Uh, it. I mean, like you do open up. Like, I guess it's not the end of the world if like it, your trigger gets stifled, but like, or if he plays like a meddling mage post combat, like what do you do then? I don't know, but if he plays a meddling mage, then he sorts it. Sure. So that you just take in twelve and you don't get to. Well, I guess I guess you still get to trigger off that. Out. Yeah. Rest. Yes. Marking this aura silence. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the other option is propaganda. He didn't seem interested in taking that earlier. And aura silence seems like a much better card. So. <laughs> Though I mean, like it being in the graveyard does not mean it's necessarily like gone forever. Not only is guys blessing, but we did see replenish. So. Rich kind of has nothing, though, too. He played that second land, so he can't. Oh, so he's not. He's got a propaganda. Like I, I kind of want to see the, the Armageddon now. I have no idea where my advantage bar is right now. This is a, this is an interesting point of the game. Yeah. I guess I mean the good news for Mano is that like it's it's gonna be hard for Rich to trigger land tax. There's no scroll rack or anything. He's not triggering oath right now. So it does seem like Mano has some amount of time to kind of pick his spot when he wants to go for it again. But in general, when the game goes long, I think Rich's deck is favored. Yeah, I there's a Phoenix in hand. Is is that something you think? The it is. You go, you go land Phoenix next turn. It is a little bit awkward. Like Mano might trigger Oath and get like a Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think could happen?
All right, so it looks like Rich draws and says go. The Phoenix is not not coming into play at least this turn. He's gonna sit back. There's an aura silence. That one is uh problematic. Definitely. Yeah, that that makes Mano basically have to play into Lantex eventually. I guess Lotus Petal could allow you. Like if you had seal cleansing and lotus petal, you could have three lands, pay for a lotus petal, and then the next turn pay four for a seal cleansing. But seems rough. Yeah, mano depend depending on seals is is very rough against Aura Silence. Yeah. All right. I, mean, I I just moved the advantage for our... <laughs> We've 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 got enough information that we we could say that Rich is favored in the spot. I'm still kind of hoping for an Armageddon. That would I think that would just be the the nail in the in the coffin just to close things out. I don't know if Armageddon's still in the list though. I would assume one is. I don't still think Rich would. He's got a whole. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it with this deck, it it definitely rewards people who come up with a plan, and uh, you can get take advantage of certain situations that that like sometimes you just think, oh, Armageddon's bad because it's a four mana sorcery against a deck that tries to kill me right away. Well, here's a situation where it's kind of like just having one in your deck, and if you get to cast it here, then you just have all the time in the world like mana would never be able to rebuild and probably by the time he would get to that mana that you'd find that armageddon again so yeah here's where yeah if i'm a part of deck i'm always like so scared my opponent's gonna bring crypt and if i, I feel like if mano had crypts now he might i think in a situation like this he might be able to make it so that he can't lose but i mean at I worst he still needs flowers at worst, you have an aura of silence in play. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I guess more of the idea when I was talking about casting armor again, it, it would show that, like, basically you'd be able to get Mano in a position where he'd never be able to come out of it. Like, yeah. you'd be able to Armageddon his lands, and then you'd have this loop with Gaia's Blessing and be able to get it back, and you'd, he'd never be able to amount to, like, more than one or two lands. And he's not coming back from that. Yeah. He's, uh... I feel like it should just be like Drago, Drago on both sides here, but that's I, I I'm hoping that like I think that might have something to make this interesting. Yeah, uh so I mean the the hard decisions that he kinda has to make is kinda like Well, I mean if he had a land that third land probably wouldn't be that oh it would be because he has two undiscovered paradises. So yeah. like it's kinda saying like what card do I want to discard? It, that could be an agonizing thing. The the problem is is kind of like I don't even know what his long term game plan like what is what is the best situ situation for Mano like how would he still win this game? Yeah, he just discarded a flooded strand. Yeah, I mean I guess it would be I think it would be Lotus Petal into Land Seal Cleansing, but even then then you're triggering Land Tax. Um, which is nice. But such a nice guy. I just know he's saying, you can't let me trigger land tax. He's trying to say something like that to him. <laughs> <laughs> like, at one point, he factor picture against me, and he's like, alright, I, 
there's a replenish here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this over the other four cards just to save you time, you know? <laughs> like, well, I was to say, like, if Rich is saying that, I think Mano is aware because he, he did, like, stifle, like, two land tax triggers in a previous true. game, so... He is, he's old school. He knows yeah. not to let him get three, three basics. Yeah. All right, we got an Enlightened Tutor. Uh, uh, scroll Rack? Are you Zernorb or Silence? So I might just get Aura of Silence. <laughs> Aura of Silence. Pile on. Yeah. Just get things real quiet over here. <laughs> Scroll rack. Okay. Always, I I do like getting the card that I think my opponent's going to immediately scoop to. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we do that. Yeah, this looks like it's uh, just a matter of time before yeah. Mano packs it up, but... Um... Yeah, it looks fairly inevitable. At this point. Yeah, but I mean, like, he put up a great run, and, like, this match was actually really exciting. I mean, like, for him to take it to five, like, I don't... I don't know how this matchup plays all the time. It just feels like Rich has all the tools to fight what, what Mano is doing. Um, so... Props to him for uh, taking two games in this match. Yeah, there's a. I think there's a scary three turns with a parfait deck, and if it gets past those three turns, it's almost hopeless. Mano's deck is not made to grind a game out. <laughs> yeah, he's he's more short term setup, so. I think this version of Dreadnought is the hardest for Parfait to beat. Uh, I could see maybe the blue-red one being it. Okay, we got a hand revealed. I think this is a, a concession for Mano. Oh, no, it's Duress. Duress is being resolved. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so two Enlightened Tutors, Meddling Mage, Seal of Cleansing, one that I've been talking about for a while, Stifle, no, I can... Mother of Runes, and two lands. I wonder if she had Gromar's Cavern in this deck, you know, in, in, in the land tax world. Oh, I was like, I'm like, how is he getting to rest with eight cards in his hand? But the answer is because of Porton, so. <laughs> oh. I'm like, I'm like counting the cards, I'm like, how does Mano have eight cards? <laughs> a cheater is discovered. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just Porton, just the, the slow trips. <laughs> All right, we got a second land tax. All right, so let's try and figure out a way. I mean, we do see that there's a seal cleansing there. I think I think Mano is waiting for a lotus petal. I mean, <laughs> here's a cabal therapy. It's a. Uh... I don't think he named Ivory Tower or Red Elemental Blast. So. I don't think you can. I don't think you want to play a land here. Nope. All right. He's just, he's just All right. All right. The rich moves on. Yeah. So, rich and his uh, parfait oath deck takes down Brian Manalakis and the Esper Dreadnought. So, rich has secured his spot in the finals. We are going to be figuring out who our second finalist is in our upcoming match. Uh, let's listen in to the players and uh, we can kind of maybe get some insight of how they sideboarded or just how what they thought about this matchup. We just unmuted you guys too. I think it went hey guys. about how I thought it would go. I really like my my I had a shitty portent hand in game five and I was sick of it. It was like two portents, one land, two petals, and like two stifles or something. Right. I'm like, those are the kind of hands I've been keeping. It's not great. Um, my land was a gemstone mine. Also, I'm like, fuck it. I'll mulligan that. My top two cards were dreadnoughts and I was on the draw. So but you, granted, that's you, you obviously can't look, right? Because that's just not it's just right, right. No, but I'm just saying, like, so that's that's a medium important hand that I don't that I do mulligan and I ship the nuts. And I keep kind of crappy middling important hands earlier and I draw mono shit. 
So yeah. that's sort of how it felt to me. Like that when I got a quick one out, it did better than I thought it would do. You just didn't have it. And then when I didn't get one out, you mostly got your engine going. So it went according to plan, I thought. Yeah. You know, it, it kind of, from my end, feels like this matchup is way more dependent on his draws than mine. You know, my deck is going to do its consistent thing every time. And I I think it would be a trap if I tried to mulligan into, let's say, a Swords to Plowshares every hand. Because he has somewhere between 4 and 12 ways to stop that from happening, depending on how you want to count it. So I feel like my best situation is to keep any kind of reasonable hand and hope that Mano's draws don't get him to where he needs to be. You're like a strong, consistent train, and he's got to like load up the dynamite and blow up the tracks before you run. <laughs> it <laughs> feel that way, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I have inevitability in the matchup, but that doesn't always translate into doing enough, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I, yeah, I agree. Also, you can't you can't just mulligan for swords, right? That's crazy. Um, right. Keep anything anything that resembles a decent draw that can that has a few engine parts and some mana and whatever, and just you know hope I don't really have a quick one and or if I do, you can right. that that day's game you could have stopped me even though I did have it. You know. Right. Yeah, that was a really interesting game where I could have played around days, but if I do that, I have three land. He has three land. I don't get the land back. I die in two turns to meddling mage. Um, yeah, that was a cool game. Um, that was a really good game. Yeah. The other game where you had Eternal Dreadnought, I mean... I that was super Eternal cool. One... What do you mean? That was so cool. <laughs> I had Eternal One Land Tax. I was going to be able to um, follow it up with, uh, what, a Zurin Orb? I didn't have Sword, so I just died. Yeah. And Vision Charm is really good because it lets Dreadnought dance around Oath. Yes. That was pretty key, the one game. Right? Very, that was, yeah, that was, that was good. Yeah. That first um, game, you got maximum punish with the core time. That was hard to watch. Yeah, it was just brutal, right? And if like, yeah. I just think that if somehow if we if we skip switch our game three and game one draws, and I have decent cards on top, like I, if I can find a dreadnought in game one, that might just do it. Um, yeah. yeah. So clearly, there's a lot of variance in this and whatever. I think I think I was a slight dog. He thinks he was a slight dog. Yeah. It probably means the matchup is pretty close. I think the most interesting thing is our banning decisions. Last time it felt like a fairly obvious we both ban the good decks or the good decks and we end up playing Sly against each other. And um, his Sly's advantage there. So I didn't really want to do that again. Plus, as he mentioned pre match, it's not exciting, right? The people didn't come right. to watch Pup versus Mog. We just didn't want to do it again. And so I thought I was actually going to play, I was going to ban his Sly and play my Sly against his Parfait, which is also not a great matchup. But I thought with a couple of crypts, <coughs> Texas and whatever, I would have a shot. And then he came over the top and banned my Sly, which is funny because if I had not gotten fancy and just banned his Parfait like any person with a brain would have done, I would have got to play Dreadnought against Blue White or Heaven Forbid Sly. And I would have been a pretty good favorite in both of those matchups instead of the slight dog that I was here. So, so I, got, I think I got a little fancy. I'm going to blame, I want to on the air, blame Mike Flores because I hung out with him on Sunday and we hatched, we hatched this scheme. And this is exactly what it was, a harebrained scheme. Okay, I was wondering why you would do something like ban my slide deck, but now that you tell me you've been hanging out with Flores. <laughs> yeah, one, exactly. With 1-7 or 1-6? Yeah, yes, I believe yeah, right. six. I don't... told you to ban something and you listened to <laughs> I learned my, I, I truly learned my lesson because I couldn't believe it when Mike told me when Hoyb told me that you banned Sly, I thought I thought he was reiterating my ban for Matt. I'm like, really? No. He, he banned Sly? So I also didn't want to subject the viewers to another Sly mirror match. So I thought that you were going to ban my Parfait deck, and then we would play Blue-White against Dreadnought. And I thought that would have been an interesting match. All right, and apparently Mana was so ashamed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. I, I, Sometimes he has got a rage but no, I get it. So, okay. yeah, man. I'll Wait, so hold on, hold on, Rich. I just cut out for that last second. What was your thought process? Because I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, I thought that it would be a boring match if we played Sly versus Sly. So I thought okay. that you would ban my Parfait deck, and then I would ban your Sly deck, and then we would play my Blue White Control against your Blue White Dreadnought deck, and that would be a much more interesting match to watch. 
It would, but it's one like I think you're a 45 55 favorite in Sly, and I think I'm 55 45 in that not match. So you're willing to sacrifice maybe not 10, but a good amount of percentage points for the good of the people. You truly are a good man, Riche. I would never have done that. I thought it was about the same, maybe a point here or there, but I'm not sacking 10 points. This is the fucking PSS, man. I'm not sacking 10 points. That's crazy. I mean, if I was doing what I thought was logically in my interest, I'd do what I did in the Swiss round. But this, right. is, this is the big time. People are tuning in all around the globe to watch this. How many viewers do we have right now? Uh, I don't know. Um, 1,100. 11,000 viewers, <laughs> right? Only 1,100. 1,100. Okay, that's great. So maybe 1,100 right. viewers are tuning in, getting a better experience. So, I mean... So it could be actually in your best interest in the long run, right? Maybe you truly see the forest for the trees, and maybe you have eight percentage points on me if we go sly on sly, but you win in the long run because pre-modern grows and becomes a better format and more people are involved and you gain more value out of it. And maybe you're just, you're just thinking big picture and I just am... And short terming it. You it sounds like a big picture because you decided that uh, you'd ban my sly deck too. So right, okay, all right. I'll take. I'll accept a little bit of your credit. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we were both. We're we're not going to be jackal v jackaling again. No, yeah. none of that. No. Now, just think about this. What's the spread in viewers right now versus if we were pup versus pup? It's probably like three hundred viewer difference. I bet. Right. I oh, think certainly. No one wants to watch a sly mirror <laughs> match. I mean. <laughs> I, I guess Aaron Dix does, but you know, he's probably watching anyway. Especially the most awkward one on earth when I'm like, uh, price, cycle price, you know, not even cycle, won. just discard price. I, Rich, if I were you, I'd be like, give me back in the ring against three price of progress if I read that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's the only thing worse than having to have three price of progress in the slime mirror is losing to the guy with three price of progress in the slime mirror. That is true. Yeah, that's right? it. That didn't do your reputation any favors. <laughs> I know, I know. So I, I, you know, Rich's red band makes more sense than yours, man. I mean, you've got you've got dreadnought, right? And you've already proven your superiority in the red bear. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> like mine, mine didn't make sense, but I just thought I actually played. I've never in my life tested, but I hung out with those guys on Sunday, and they're like, "Hey, let's let's proxy your slide deck up against Rich's um, parfait because that's what it's going to be because he's banning dreadnought." And I played a few games, and I won like I won like three or four and oh post board. I just vortexed the shit out of him, and like whatever he had, he 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 had some stuff, but I had a lot of maybe I drew a lot of vortexes, and it was, you know, those were aberrations, but it didn't feel that bad. And so I'm like, fine, I'll play this forty five fifty five dog matchup because it's way more fun for the people. And then you, and we're both we're both acting for the people. Yeah, and the people got what they wanted, and. I, I think that the parfait versus sly matchup is more favorable than forty five fifty five. Um, you, you might be right. Yeah, I'm. But me too. You know th this matchup. This matchup feels forty five fifty five, and I would have given you the five percent. That's crazy. And what do you guys think, Hoip and BK? Who do you think's favorite here? I would have thought parfait was. I thought it has the tools, but I mean, I you definitely can see. I mean, like the the games that you're gonna win, it's just you're gonna put together your combo right. or like duress a card out of their hand and then just slap a dreadnought down. So I, I I don't know. I don't like the on Rich's side in the matchup. I think I don't know. It's like um, it's scary. You, you like you have a lot of draws that he just cannot beat, right? Right. Right. If I yeah. if I do it quick, he doesn't really. He needs a few turns to really do his thing. So right. if I do it quick and I can duress his swords or his seal and he or he doesn't have one, a la game two or whatever it's just it's it's quick if, and dirty yeah if you pass on your second turn without an artifact then i feel like i'm in great shape but you have a lot of draws where you don't pass on your second turn right <laughs> yeah. Your, yeah your deck's made to play like the best first three turns of mad in pre-modern pretty much and did you see it what my first three turns were in some of those matches they were just yeah. land go 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 <laughs> go right yeah yeah if if you're if you're casting portent on your second turn i feel yeah. good you're but thrilled. sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're just getting this Phyrexian thing on the table and, you know. Yeah. And I, like, most of my deck requires building up an engine. I have my swords. Yeah. I have um, Seal, Two Aura of Silence. But even Oath might not hit, right? I might just get this Shard Phoenix that arrives. Yeah. And then, you know, that's not going to get me where I need to be. 
So even dress and therapy are like pretty can really slow Rich down. I think yeah, they really make it hard for him to get better. right. No, they they can't. I mean, that's that's the whole point of this. The other issue is that I've like. Like mother, mother is good against your removal, but I don't really want to turn on oath. But I don't care about oath that much because, like, I I'm just gonna have to play my twelve twelves into your oath anyway. So it was like a lot of push pull. Yeah. I I ended up leaning with going with mothers. I thought they would be good I, enough against your removal, and I could fade fade real oathing or something. Or I could stifle a clutch oath trigger or, or whatever. But I thought was... you would, which is why I brought an engineered plague. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um. It, I, I, I spent way too long thinking about how to sideboard. And I actually side I think I sideboarded differently all three post board games. I do too. Um, I didn't do anything fancy, just sword swords out, seal obviously in, and I brought mother in and I brought in another daze on the play. I think I might have cut both dazes once on the draw. One game I left one days in, but it was like whatever. Seals obviously in, mother's in, and I was dancing around. I played it one crypt one game. But mostly it was just like two and a half cards each match. That's it. I I went back and forth on how many Armageddon's do I want? Do I want Zer's Weirding? Like, if if you get a Dreadnought on turn two, Zer's Weirding is embarrassing. But it's also a kill mechanism if you stumble at all. It was very good in the one game you played it. Right. It was a, it was a great card to tutor for. Like if yeah. you had everything else, and that that locked it up. So right. It, it means that you're you're not going to get any further than you are now. Um, which is really good, but it's, you know, so I, I had it in for some games, not for others. Um, do I want the Replenish? Do I want Argivian Find against you? Uh, I thought about Stifle, but then I figured that that's just overthinking myself. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think given you think that I'm a little advantaged, I think that me and Hoyt think one thing, you guys think the other thing. My guess is this is pretty close to a flip. One thing I think it's kind of funny is I feel like Manu and I are closer to Dreadnought players, and both of <laughs> you two players are closer to Marfei, and so we both are like afraid of the other deck. I yeah. feel like that's kind of the perspective we come to, so I don't know. That's There's almost certainly it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I feel even lucky to be here after what I did to you the other night, BK, so um, <laughs> I'm, playing, I'm playing with house money, anyway. And well, do you, thanks for... I mean, you did all that just to mold the five in the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, were like, you, you had you had portent, stifle, pedal, pedal, and you're like, I'm just not lucky enough to get to a dreadnought. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's just yeah. That I mean, you have to mulligan that, right? I just I. I don't know. I don't know. No idea. Did you have a dress too? I had. It was it was stifle, stifle, portent, portent, land. Like meddling mage, I did not have a, 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 if I had a um duress, if I had a black card, it would have changed things for sure. Yeah. Did the land did the land make blue mana? The the land was a gemstone mine, so I could have done Ooh, everything. That's really awkward. Uh, yeah, gemstone but, and double portent are really awkward hand. It is right. I mean, gemstone mine theoretically might do a little work against your land tax game, but like I'm gonna puke two counters portenting the first two turns. Right. So yeah. It's it was just you awful. had two pedals though, right? I had two pedals, yes. Ugh, so obviously, if I, if I know Dreadnoughts are my top two cards, that's the easiest keep of all time. I literally go turn one, play my third pedal, have protection up, like it's fucking... I might just win because I vision charm your swords, right? I probably just win if I keep. But, yeah. Can't keep, though. Can't can't think about it like that. I just think it's it's right. funny how awkward... This is why I never look, because it, it's, it'll just program you with bad data. Yeah, I was biased. If my portent hands worked earlier, I'm keeping that hand. I think because I'm then I'm on fire, right? I'm feeling it. I'm I'm in the zone, yeah. but they're just not working, and so it was close enough. I thought I'd mull it. What'd you keep against me in that game three? <laughs> it was a, it was what it was actually pretty bad. I talked to I talked to Ole, and he said, "Oh no, never mind." He was talking about the the match against Ryan, where he was like, "I definitely want to mull again that that one lander that I had." He said that I forgot what I kept against you. I think it was an easy keep though. It was pedal land. Enlightened Tutor. It was an island. It was like Island Pedal and Light Tutor, I think, and no other land. And it had a portent though. Portent ties the whole room together, as we've seen. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm also I just paid. This is how luck works, right? I spent all my luck against you. I had none left for this match. I was fresh yeah. out of luck. 
<laughs> I'm not sure that's how it works, but spend it, spend it where it's best, you know. <laughs> Right, because now I do feel good because look at how much pr fame and prestige I've gained by making the semifinals of the prestigious PSS4. I'm building That's my brand here. That's what stands for in the PSS, right? Prestigious. Yes. yes, that is exactly what it stands for, yes. All right, we're going to wrap things up because we do have another yeah, match yeah. that still needs to be played. Mano, is there anything else you want to say before before you sign off of the, the PSS? No, other than thank you. <laughs> thank you and Flint for everything. Rich, you were a formidable, a formidable opponent as you always. Well. I really was very sad that I had the three or whatever. I even think I had the two seed, but whatever. I wanted the four seed because I wanted to destroy Aaron Dix. And I said, <laughs> he, cannot, he cannot win that match. Talk about luck. He spent all his luck against me last time. He was dead in the water. He was dead. All right. So thanks for everything. It was a blast as usual. I appreciate, I appreciate it all. All right. Thanks, Mano. Very Job well, well done. And Rich, we will see you, Rich, tomorrow because we'll be playing our finals tomorrow. Good, time. Uh, good luck tomorrow, Rich. 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be starting. So, all right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, so yeah. we're going to get our other players for our other match situated. Uh, we're going to go on a short break as we get them set up, but we're going to have our match between Aaron Dix and Tom Matelski. Uh, so we will be right back. So don't go anywhere. We'll have our second semifinals of the PSS shortly.